Hi everyone, it's Akira. It's time for round 6 of the Warrior Cats art show. Submissions related to redrawn Warrior Cats book covers start at this timestamp. But on the subject of art show, we had 20 contestants submit for last round on silly Warrior Cats OCs, and we have to eliminate 6 before we get to this round. The eliminated contestants are... Honey Bun, Sock Egg, Desolate Flower, Dan Sly, Tree, and Silverclaw. Some of these people actually had a genuine chance of making it to the end given their performance in previous rounds, so it just goes to show how intense the competition has gotten. I'll talk more about the future of the art show at the end of this video, but for now, let's bring our focus to the submissions for our current challenge by our top 14. What better place to start than the original Into the Wild? So what I'm going to be doing with my commentary in this video is trying to find all the symbolism I can. If any of the artists are watching, by all means leave a comment below if there's anything you want to add or correct. So here's Jindrea's submission, a simple rusty stepping out into the wild as the book is titled. Though interestingly, the wild scenery is mostly behind him, and the place he is facing towards is blank. Perhaps the wild was with him all along, and he's stepping into something far more unknown? Jindrea was the only artist for this round to make a back cover, which sneaks in a few cute protagonists and mini scenery. Good stuff. We suddenly get a lot darker with a dangerous path. This cover drawn by Duniper. The dogs in this book are heartless killing machines, so of course the blank eyes and red backgrounds behind them works well. And the two background dogs are positioned in a way they sort of make them look like a Cerberus. And again, these dogs are monsters, so very fitting. And in the front, we have Swift Paw and Bright Paw, calm and serious. Though with the subtle eyebrow dip and wider eye, we see that Bright Paw is more unsure of herself. A true horror situation. Egg drew Crooked Star's promise. We see a younger Crooked Paw or Kit staring at his reflection, clearly feeling his insecurities over the impacts of his injury. While behind him, we have the shadow of Maple Shade watching carefully and waiting for the right moment to feed on his fear and sadness. The trees are barren like those of the dark forest, though it's still somewhat light out, as the impact of the dark forest is not upon him yet, it is merely waiting in the distance. Jem chose to do Maple Shade's Vengeance. The amount of texturing done here is absolutely crazy, right down to her tears and saliva. Below her, we have our three victims with small outlines of a snake, teeth, and claws closing in on them. And below them, reflected in the blood-filled puddle, are the kits she killed them in the name of. Behind her head, I believe there is a cat skull and a blood moon. I suppose it's fitting, because death follows her. And beside her are the logos for RiverClan and ThunderClan, which she had torn through. Overall, I am just completely blown away. We got the other edgy villain, Scourge, covered by Marble Maniac. This Rise of Scourge cover has a red background, the shadows of his supporters, the nasty asymmetric teeth shoved in his collar, the blood in his claws. All the trademark features of Scourge are present, and his fur is majestic as it should be. 10 out of 10 Scourge would not want to mess with him. The only new prophecy book represented comes from Ren with Moonrise. I like how the scene here is split in two. On the bottom we have our journey in cats entering the cave of the tribe, and at the top, we're a little deeper in the cave, with Stone Teller seeing the vision of the silver cat. Little does Feathertail know what destiny she is walking into. Poor girl. Sleep Worse gives us a tribute to Mothwing and her character in her novella, Mothwing's Secret. Her parents, Tigerstar and Sasha, cleverly have their eyes covered, as she never really got to know them and the depiction of Star Clan cats is ugly and confusing, as she never had a connection with them, all while she is sinking in water, possibly the moon pool, towards the claws of who we can assume is Hawk Frost, as he took advantage of her by throwing her in the medicine cat position to do his bidding. Definitely lots of details from her story captured here, and it's beautiful. Really nice work. Koska Owl gives us none other than Eclipse. At the top of the image is the eclipse, of course. The three sit huddled in the front, eyes glowing slightly to call attention to them, 
while the silhouette of the mysterious soul is outlined behind them. The reds and oranges mixed with the darkness really creates this foreboding image. Very spooky indeed. The only book chosen twice in this video is Eclipse because Kirabin also chose it, and she took a very different approach, bringing Soul front and center. Soul places his tail over Blackstar's eyes, and a little star on Blackstar's chest is split, as of course this represents Soul manipulating Blackstar into abandoning Star Clan, essentially to the point where Blackstar was no longer using his own judgment. Again we see the use of red and orange mixed with black. Soul means business. The book after Eclipse, Long Shadows, was done by Cupid Minty, and she filled the canvas with every major character from the book. In the bottom and middle, we have the cats involved in the fire scene, and above them there are Soul, Leafpool, and Midnight. Interesting how the more directly involved characters are really shaded with the orange of the fire, while those more on the outside looking in lean towards cooler colors with Leafpool and Midnight, though still with orange eyes, so there's some connection. Kivira gives us perhaps the most peaceful cover out of the bunch, and it's a book I wouldn't expect to be chosen, but it's beautiful. This cover for Night Whispers shows Flametail at the front, as this is the one book he has a POV in, while Jayfeather sits behind facing away from him, shadows falling on his face. As Jayfeather, of course, is burdened with more knowledge, and will eventually witness Flametail's death. And below them is the wholesome depiction of Dovewing Tigerheart romance. The use of the snow brush throughout the piece makes all the cats look cool and glittery. Really pretty cover overall. Ara has chosen to do Hollyleaf's story. She covers several events from the book, from when Hollyleaf was first found unconscious by fallen leaves. We see the fox cub that Hollyleaf cared for, and the ungrateful full-grown fox that cub grew into. We have Blossomfall and Ivypool being all lost before Hollyleaf inevitably helped them. And at the very top, we have a solitary Hollyleaf, eyes completely dark, as she isn't exactly using them much in the tunnels, and you could say she's lost a part of herself. Aura went all out on some of the fur textures, and built entire rock piles to complete the cave scenery. Overall, a very excellent composition. Entering the Broken Code, we have Lost Stars drawn by Spoopy Wing Spawner. We see a callback to the art formatting of the old covers for a book that was released after they stopped using that format. Shadow Sight's cheek fluff is very detailed, and the bent ear is a nice touch of personality. At the bottom we have Bristlefrost saving Root Spring. He's clearly breathing heavily, and the wet fur is adorable. I really love this. And finally, the most recent book chosen by one of our artists is A Light in the Mist drawn by Kata Jasper. Here we have the now iconic scene of Bristlefrost sinking in the dark forest water, while Shadow Sight calls out and Root Spring looks on in sadness. And Ashford's face is painted on the backdrop, as he is the one responsible. Definitely captures the spooky, dark atmosphere well. Okay, that's all 14 submissions. Vote using the Google form in the description, click yes on who you want to see advance to the top 10, and no on who you want eliminated. Please don't share your no votes or give any artists unwanted criticism. You must answer all 14 questions to submit. Voting will be open for 72 hours or 3 days. The results will be revealed in round 7 of the art show, where we will see submissions from the top 10 contestants. So at this point you may be thinking, top 10? Are we in the end game now? Well, sorta? 10 is a huge leap from the 84 we started the art show with, but as of now, we are only halfway through all the rounds. From here on, we will have a round for top 10 and top 7, then it goes single elimination for 6, 5, and 4. The final 4 will be the last piece of art that you vote for, and the final round 12 will actually just be a summary of all rounds prior. Each yes percentage from each round will be added together to decide the winner from the top 3. Every vote counts. Finally, I'd like to give some final words of encouragement for the six artists that were eliminated at the start of this video. Honeybun, you really shined in the way you drew nature and your backgrounds. You know your way around flowers and greenery. Add some cute cats, and you got some great stuff. Sockig, your art style is great, and especially I love the way you draw your anthro cats. They were just oozing with personality. 
Every round, you were delivering unique ideas. Desolate flower. The fur! The fur! You always paint the fur so soft and detailed. I just want to, like, pet all the cats you draw. They're so amazing. Dan Sly, I already gush about your art in a lot of the challenge videos you submit for, so I'll try not to repeat myself. But yeah, you got clean line work, bright colors, and fun character expressions. Always catches my eye. Tree, you had the honor of kicking off the art show as I chose your art for the thumbnail in round one. You're very versatile. You can make cats cute, and you can make cats terrifying. Good skills to have. Silverclaw, you just kept making your cats more and more detailed as the rounds progressed. And quite frankly, I'm impressed. My favorite thing from you was definitely your soft and caring bright heart. All of our eliminated contestants are such amazing artists. Alright, bye everyone!